to talk today about engine checks or pre passage checks. Um, first thing is think about yourself. Okay, are you competent in looking after the engine yourself? I suppose is the first thing. Um, I mean, if you're not, then you know you can certainly learn. It all depends on again you. What I would recommend is getting hold of your service manual for your diesel engine or petrol engine, whichever one you've got. Uh, this is just a copy, obviously photocopied there, just so that the good one stays neat and tidy. And then I've got a operation manual as well, which again is really handy. So you can just get really familiar with the engine, know what you're looking at before you go to sea. Um, the worst thing really is if you're at sea and you do break down and you don't know anything about your engine, it could be something as small as a bit of weed sucked into the strainer or an air bubble in the fuel line and you'll be a sitting duck effectively. So I really recommend that you look at it beforehand, get familiar with it while you're under anchor or in a harbour. So what I've done is I've broken checks down into three sections. A sort of pre-season check, you know, that's sort of a bit more extreme. Um, you've got passage checks and just final checks, you know. Something as simple as just checking over the stern, make sure you're pumping water. So we're going to start with the fuel filter. And what that's all about is exactly what it says in the tin, really. Fuel comes out the tank, through the lines, goes through a filter. It's like a paper filter, so it catches all the bits, gets all mixed up in there, and then the good fuel carries on to your engine. So we'll look at that. We're going to look at the impeller housing. I like to check the impeller housing, make sure there's no leaks, make sure that you know it's looking good. Obviously, you've already replaced the impeller at the start of the year, which is on episode one. And we're going to look at belts as well. Um, obviously, belts run your alternator. They can run pumps. Um, there's all sorts of other things that belts can run, but you want to look at those. Make sure that then the teeth are good. Make sure that the actual rubber isn't starting to disintegrate. From there, you're going to move on to the more common checks. So we're going to look at our oil levels. Make sure that the air levels are between the correct marks. Um, we want to check the oil filter. Make sure it's not leaking. Just in case, you know, you don't want a little bit of an oil leak in there. It's not not ideal. Okay, so here we've got the fuel filter. Um, obviously inside there you've got a paper cartridge which catches all the dirt and all that sort of stuff. That actually comes from the tank, it runs through and it goes through to the pump. Um, with this particular model, you can crack it off here, that unscrews. This then slides down pre-season, have a quick feel around, make sure it's all sort of dry, you know, it's all looking, it's all looking pretty good. And again with the hoses at the top here, see if we can, yeah, the hoses at the top there as well, you know, you want to make sure that they're all dry, make sure that they're not creased, you know, not perished, all those sorts of things. Moving down, we're going to look at the impeller. I've already had the casing off here to change the impeller. Um, that was on our previous episode of servicing this engine. So really, have a quick look around here. There's a little bit of water there. That's not, not a biggie. Run your fingers around the top. Again, you know, just checking the rubber hoses. Make sure that they're not all perished. Make sure that they're all pretty good and happy. Next we're going to look at the strainer. Now the strainer on this model is at the very back, which you think is a bit of a nightmare. But luckily they've incorporated a hatch at the back, which is in our aft cabin, which I can get to. And then to the right here, we've got the coolant bottle. So I'm just going to jump through and climb under there. Okay, I've grabbed my torch and luckily with this model it's got a clear top. So you can have a quick look in there, make sure it's not blocked up with any weed. And uh, 
You're good to go, really. To the left of it, you've got your coolant tank. This is your expansion tank. Um, not something to muck around with when it's hot because the level changes. Ideally, you want it bang in the middle between full and low. Um, if you take it too close to the full mark, it will overflow. They always do, and you end up with coolant down in the uh, bilge of the engine there. So, you know, I tend to leave mine about in the middle. It could do with topping up slightly, and uh, that would be us all done. While we're looking at fuel filters and uh, fuel diesel and stuff, I've got a Fuel Plus. It's a bio side. Don't know if you can see that there. And what that does is it, it's a special liquid which you put hardly any in. Um, 3 mil to 10 litres of fuel. Goes straight in the tank and it kills the algae which lives in diesel. Um, you get sort of diesel bug they call it. So this stuff kills it and it stops all the lines blocking up with the diesel bug. It's like, a, like an algae that um, grows in all the lines. It grows on top of the diesel where there's a vapour layer. So what you could either do is top your tank right to the brim, you can still get it. I like to do both, top it and use this stuff, make sure you don't get any blockages. So to the left of the fuel filters here, just down here, you've got the dipstick. Um, let's see if we can pop this out and have a look at it while I'm holding the camera. So you can see there. The oil level is between the two dots, so that's uh, perfect, I'd say. You could fill it up a touch more, but it's not something to worry about. So you want to go ahead, and ideally you want to wipe that down with a cloth. Okay, let's pop that there. Got a bit of tissue here, so I'm going to wipe that down. And then we're going to have a look around the side. This is through the heads at the oil filter just down here. Now something I like to do is write the date on the oil filter. That means you can always have a quick check and just see when you last replaced it. And at least anyone else knows as well. So we're just having a look around the bottom there and we'll see what looks good. And there's no oil leaking from it so I'm happy with that as well. Right so now we've looked at that what we want to do is just have a quick talk about sort of what's going on there. Um, if you don't check out your coolant, if you don't check your strainer, if you don't check your impeller, you're going to have overheating issues at some point. Um, it comes very quickly. You can have to turn off your engine to let it cool down, but the problem with that is it's always going to happen at the worst possible time. And then likewise, if you don't check your oil on your dipstick, then you could well run low and end up seizing your engine which you really don't want to do. So next I want to talk about seacock. Um, basically you should know what a seacock is. Um, you know, you'd have to have a look in the manual if you don't but I always like to make sure that it's open. It could be that a friend has closed it thinking he's doing a good job. It could be you've knocked it closed when you're doing these checks. But crack that open, make sure it's all flowing through okay and then you're ready to fire your engine. You can fire it up and what I do recommend is always always check over the stern of the boat. Can't stress that enough. Make sure that you're pumping water. Um, if you forget about every other engine check before you throw your lines please just check your pumping water make sure that's all good. Throw lines and then and you can be aware at least you know your engine's getting cooled sufficiently. Right, cheers guys. Um, hopefully that's pretty beneficial for you. Uh, you can check out our other video and um, episode one about servicing Yamaha Moondancer's engine. Um, doesn't go into everything but it gives you a pretty good idea where things might be and what to look out for. Thanks for watching guys. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and the little bell next door to it and you'll be kept up to date every time we post a new video.